face so pretty, baby body full of curves. If he can't handle the speed, I kick him to the curb. I didn't even know at the time that I was doing anything other than expressing myself. Call her Eve of Destruction. Call her just Eve, but whatever you do, don't call her Pop Princess. She hates that name. From her humble beginnings in Philly, Eve is living proof that luck isn't what you always need to succeed in life. She had a lucky break, but without talent, she would have lost everything. A hustler by nature, Eve isn't afraid to work hard when it's necessary. From her high school poems, to a one-month career as a stripper, to her meteoric rise to fame, her fall from grace, and even finding a soulmate, this is the life of Eve Jeffers Cooper. Born on November 10, 1978 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Eve fell in love with music at the age of 12. From that day forward, anytime someone asked her what she wanted to be when she grew up, Eve would smile and say she wanted to be a singer. I would probably say like 12 is when I was like, I love music. Besides joining the school choirs, Eve also created her own singing group called EDGP, or Dope Girl Posse, where all of the singers were female. They did covers of songs from Color Me Bad and In Vogue. The group even had a manager, but they eventually split up. Before everyone went their separate ways, Eve remembers the manager telling them to give rap a go. However, the breakup of EDGP took a toll on Eve. This event could be considered the catalyst for her early descent into depression. In 1996, when she was just 18 years old, Eve felt like she lost herself. She was confused and didn't know what she wanted out of life. In the depths of her despair, she became a stripper for about a month, a hustler by heart. She believed that if stripping was what it took to make it, she would willingly pay the price. The club I was in had a lot of people from the music industry that used to come there. And once I found that out, I was like, this is gonna be my hustle. So I would say to guys like, listen, I will give you a lap dance for free. Even though the money was good, Eve felt like she didn't belong at the strip club. All of the coworkers were much older than she was and they all had several children. She remembers saying, Eve, you do not belong here. This is not your world. Thankfully, at the time, the rapper Mace, who was signed by Sean Combs' record label, told her to stop stripping and focus on rapping instead. She quit her stripping job and became a rapper, but that was hard. With no money coming in, Eve was desperate. Her managers at the time were the local drug dealers. For a few months, things were hell. But then her quote-unquote managers told Eve that Dr. Dre's right-hand man was coming to town looking for weed. Immediately, they had a light bulb moment. The plan was to present Eve as the weed girl. Eve was confused because she didn't want to be involved with drugs. But you see, her managers had a plan. She wouldn't even have to touch the drugs. All she would have to do is show up and freestyle for Dr. Dre's right-hand man. Her role would be a cover-up. When Dr. Dre's man came to town, they rushed Eve to the house where the deal was supposed to take place. When their customers arrived and asked for the package, they started playing music and Eve started freestyling on the spot. The man was dumbstruck, but enjoyed her performance. Right then and there, he called Dr. Dre and said, yo, we found our girl. In one night, Eve's whole life was changed. The following evening, she went to Los Angeles to record a demo for Dr. Dre. She was signed by Aftermath Records, Dr. Dre's record label, and her stage name changed to Eve of Destruction. Her first appearance was on the soundtrack for the political satire film titled Bullworth in 1998. At the age of 19, Eve was living in a condo in LA with a major record label backing her career and money pouring in, so life was good for about eight months. After that, Dr. Dre dropped Eve, and she had to take a humbling bus ride back to Philly. Depression hit again, but this time it didn't last that long. Three weeks after she arrived in Philly, Eve received a second phone call. Her manager told her that the New York Rough Riders might want to sign her, but there was a catch. She had to go to New York that same night. The next morning, Rough Riders put her in a rap cipher where she had to prove she was the greatest of all the young rappers they pinned her against. Eve wasn't afraid. She was confident in her ability to rap and it didn't take long before she blew the competition out of the water. Rough Riders signed her and she appeared on DMX's Rough Riders Anthem. She later appeared on You Got Me from The Roots. She and The Roots really hit it off, and for a while, Eve was one of their background vocals. Her stage name was still Eve of Destruction. We got Cash Money and Rough Riders, which are like the two hottest street labels right real now. Hot, real and hot. we killing it, you know what I'm saying? The tours have been great, the fans are great. It's hot, it's hot. 
it took less than a year for this young female rapper to release her first single, Call What Y'all Want. The song reached spot number 29 on the Billboard Hot 100 in the US, and it became the number one smash hit on the Hot Rap Song chart. Following her success of the single, Eve released her first album titled Let There Be Eve, Rough Riders First Lady. As soon as the album hit the shelves on September 14, 1999, it sold 213 copies in the first week. Overall, Eve's album sold over 2 million copies and became certified double platinum. Her album took the number one spot on the Billboard 200 list and cemented Eve as the third ever female rapper in U.S. history to achieve this feat. This album became the start of the next 30 years. With her second album, which enjoyed a similar success, she won a Grammy for Best Rap Collaboration along with Gwen Stefani. She also won an MTV Music Award. Following the success of her music career, Eve focused on acting. She was part of the main cast in movies like Barbershop. Get out. Don't put your finger in my face. Leave. Terry, I'm doing out. Barbershop 2 Black in Business and Barbershop The Next Cut, where she played Shelly Williams. At one time, she was so popular that she even got her own sitcom called Eve. The series ran from 2003 until 2006, but it was canceled after three seasons and a total of 66 episodes. While filming her show, she also appeared in another comedy movie called The Cookout. Latifa, ja Rule, Eve, Danny. And then she appeared in the film drama, The Woodsman. And freaks like you out on the street. It just means we gotta catch you all over again. Her most recent project includes hosting the ultra-popular daytime talk show, The Talk, on CBS from 2017 until 2020. She was so good that they nominated her for two daytime Emmys. Her most recent TV appearance was Queens, where Eve plays Brianna and is part of the main cast. With a successful singing career and numerous TV and movie roles, Eve accumulated a net worth of over $10 million. She was always a hustler and a hard worker, so she never really believed in love. But as luck would have it, she found her soulmate where she expected it the least. Her first love, Stevie J, ended up cheating on her. They were together from 1997 until 2003, but then he released an intimate sex tape and the relationship was over. During an interview with Hot 97, Eve said that she is responsible for her decisions. She can't blame it on drugs or alcohol, and she even stated that she never watched the tape. I gotta say, I have not seen it. I haven't watched it. Never. On my life. I haven't because I just can't allow myself. The fans came to Eve's defense saying that Stevie J was wrong to post an intimate video, but we're dealing with a man who has six children from five different partners and $1.3 million in unpaid child support. After a long break from dating, Eve began seeing Maximilian Cooper, the founder of Gumball 3000, when she was 32 years old. From someone who didn't believe in love, she fell in love and is happily married to a Caucasian Brit. Not letting the racial differences get in the way, Eve found her soulmate in Max. You also fall in love. Yeah. Talk to me about that. He's cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my baby. I yeah, see, you, you like good. smiling. Cause he makes me happy. It's a good thing, it's a, trust me. Regarding their relationship, Eve revealed that Cooper is a very hard worker. He built Gumball 3000 into an international celebrity motor rally, featuring riders like Lewis Hamilton, David Hasselhoff, Tony Hawk, and French Montana. It's this drive for perfection and greatness that attracted Eve to Maximilian. The power couple now have a combined net worth of $70 million. Eve had a hard time at the beginning of the relationship because Max had four children from his previous marriage to Julie Brangstra. Eve says that her children were not aware of the racial differences and were shocked the first time they saw her get out of the shower with a shower cap and gloves. However, in an interview, Eve said that she and her husband strive to create a positive environment for the children where it's okay to ask questions and discuss all sorts of social issues and injustices. Even though Eve loved her four stepkids, she still wanted to have a baby with Max. On The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, she opened up about the difficulties of getting pregnant. But thankfully, in October of 2021, she announced that she was pregnant. And in February 2022, Eve and Max welcomed their first son into the world. Today, she is 45 and focuses mainly on her family and acting career. 
<laughs> I'm a mom. I'm a mom. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. If you'd like to take a trip down memory lane with us and learn about other black celebrities, subscribe to our channel.